Hello everyone and welcome to Sutton's Days. Today we're going to have fun. We're canning sweet potatoes. Yes we are. Look at that big old beautiful bowl of cut up cube sweet potatoes. I'm so excited. Um, I love sweet potatoes. I used to like sweet potatoes. Now I love them. I cannot seem to get enough of them. And they're typically super easy, lower in carb, you know, the whole deal. They're supposed to be healthier for you. Uh, but it involves me having to turn on the oven to cook a sweet potato. That just doesn't make sense. So I decided it's time to get some in jars. Found a sale for 69 cents a pound. Love it. And grabbed up a whole bunch of sweet potatoes, came and cut them up, cubed them up, uh, peeled them, and have them ready to rock and roll. We are going to be canning them according to the National Center for Home Food Preservation. Yes, I printed this out, but I will leave a link for you down below so that you can easily find it because we want to make sure that we're doing it the right way. Now, a lot of people will say, I don't want to blanch them. They'll be too mushy. I got news for you. It doesn't matter what you do to these. They're going to be super soft. And I will show you what they are like coming out of the jar so that you know what to expect. However, they're going to be soft, okay? Does not matter. It's a sweet potato. Sweet potatoes are super soft once they are cooked. But in order to properly can them for the tested time, at the tested pressure so that we know that they are safe, okay, you have to blanch them. You absolutely need to. So they tell you all of this on this great page here, um, but they're saying 15 to 20 minutes, remove the skins, cut medium potatoes, uh, you know, so somewhat uniform. Mine are yeah, kind, of, kind of uniform, you know, um, about an inch, give or take, are, are what I did. They're an inch headspace. So, and you're going to cover them with fresh boiling water. So first, I cut and cubed them, which I'm not dragging you along for that, but now we're going to blanch them and then we're going to get them into jars. They are not super soft when they are blanched, okay? They will be super soft when you pull them out of the jar at a later date, but it's a great way to preserve them if you don't have a root cellar, if you don't have a cool room to store them in. Um, this is the next best method and they're so good. All you have to do is drain the liquid and do your thing. So do you have to blanch them? Yes, you do. Uh, do you, do you have to add liquid? Yes, you do. Okay. Because as with meats and anything else that is hot packed, it is the water is a conduit to make sure that the heat penetrates all the way through to the center and that it is canned properly. There is no such thing as safe dry canning period. Dry canning, okay, is Russian roulette. So if that's how you and yours think up a good time, then there's nothing that I can do about that. I'm here to tell you the safe way, the right way to do it is to add liquid and blanch them, blanch them, add liquid, and then can them, okay? All I can do is tell you the safe way to do it. And so that I hope that you will do that. Let's get started on this because it's going to be so much fun. I've got the water in the pot, bringing it up to a boil. And now I'm going to strain out the sweet potatoes. Boop, boop. Add them to the pot. Okay, once I get them in there, I'm going to set my timer for 15 minutes. And I'm hoping I have enough for seven quarts. Well, we shall find out. And I may have to do this twice, but that's okay too. And in the meantime, I'm going to get my kettle going and, whoop, flying sweet potatoes. And um, the dogs are very happy to take care of that problem for me. And uh, that way, when I put them into the jars, ooh, yeah, come here, Coco. When I put them into the jars, um, sweet potatoes. Dogs love sweet potatoes. Okay, so I'm going to blanch these for 15 minutes, starting my timer now. I'm going to get my tea kettle with my hot water going so that when I strain them out of there and put them into jars, I can pour over the hot water. It's kind of a process. I know, I get it, but it's all worth it in the end. I did this a little backwards. Full confession time, I did this a little backwards. So if you read the directions... Uh, at the National Center for Home Food Preservation. They say to wash the potatoes, okay, done, um, and boil or steam until partially soft, 15 to 20 minutes. I'm not boiling them and then trying to peel them. That does not work for me. Um, so I instead 
peel them, and then blanch them for 15 minutes. Six and one half dozen the other in my mind. A watched pot never boils. I know. Okay, so my timer went off, and I am going to pull that hot lid off, okay? Use my same strainer here. There we go. And they're not super soft, but they are noticeably a little bit softer, okay? Yes. So we're going to take those and we're going to fill the jars. The really cool part about sweet potatoes is you can do it a couple of different ways. Get in there. Um, you can pack them with just water or you can pack them with a simple syrup if you like them even sweeter. I'm just packing with water. You can also add salt if you so desire. Okay, stop dropping taters. Nope, you can't have any more. That one's hot. You can't have it. Oh, okay. Puppies, they're always so happy to assist you with cleanup. Okay, so we're going to work to get these out. There we go. And get the jars. You want one inch headspace in your jars. So first there's the taters and then we'll be adding the liquid and we will be debubbling when we get these in there. I am doing just water. I don't want or need any additional sugar. Um, I don't want or need any salt. I like having the option of doing what I want with them afterwards. Okay. No, you cannot mash or puree these and can them because then it's too thick and they, are, they haven't been tested to be sure that it gets all the way through. I don't think that there's a tested way to do that. Okay, so now we're going to put these in and redo that. And the dogs are like, drop another one, drop another one. Okay, and I just heard my kettle turn off. Whoop, go in there. So, it's not too laborious. I mean, honestly, I think it's more laborious peeling them and cutting them. I don't want to boil or steam them with the skins on and then try to peel them because I burn my fingers way too easy. So, that is not my goal, okay? And this is much easier. So I'm gonna set the timer for 15 minutes again. Now we're going to get the water so that we can get these done. I have three jars that are ready for the hot water. So that's what we're doing. I have my canner heating up, okay? So that when these get all ready, I can load the canner. And I know it's odd that I'm doing quarts. I was gonna do pints. It's odd that I'm doing quarts, but I meal prep now, and I typically eat the same thing for three or four days in a row. <laughs> so I know that the sweet potatoes will be good. Okay, so now we're gonna go in there, gently move them around, okay? And that's to get out any potentially trapped air bubbles that are in there because those can help cause siphoning, okay? Now, the goal, the goal is to have all of the potatoes under the water. Here's the deal. They are potatoes, my friends. So they are going to continue absorbing some of the liquid. Um, we'll see what they look like when they come out. I don't have as much trouble with sweet potatoes as I do, say, gold or red or uh, russet potatoes. Those, whew, they're like sponges, right? But these, not so much. You do want to be careful when you're debubbling because the object is not to mash the potatoes, okay? Now we're going to wipe these rims while we're waiting for the other ones to blanch. There is nothing sticky about this, but I just, I just automatically go for the vinegar. Okay, so we're going to check out those rims, make sure there's nothing on them. Even with the funnel, you can get food on your rim. You don't want to do that. And even with the funnel, ouch, I missed one. Okay, even with the funnel, um, you can chip these. So you want to make sure that you're definitely checking out the rims, okay? 
as always, four jars, canning lids. Hey, there is a Black Friday sale. When have you ever heard of a lid company doing a Black Friday sale? I mean, seriously, this is unprecedented. So I am very excited. Some of the products on their website are going to be 30% off, fourjars.shop, okay? And if you use my code, Sutton's10, you get an additional 10% off. That is 40% off. 40% off. So you're going to want to go check that out. Um, and the information on the sale will be in the description box below because it's awesome. Great time to stock up. I mean, seriously, okay. Never, ever thought that I would see a lid company doing a Black Friday sale. I am so excited. I can't stand it. I got two more and then like a serving. So guess what I'm having for dinner tonight? Break my heart. Sweet potatoes. Okay, so I'm going to fill these two with the hot water from the kettle. I'm going to debubble. There we go. Get them all in. Get out of here. Get out of here. Okay. Okay. And as you can see, I mean, you, it does release some bubbles, okay? So it is important to make sure that you debubble. Now we're going to. Wipe these rims, put lids on these, and I'm going to move the canner. As always, the rings are going to go on finger tight. These jars, <clears throat> pardon me, are crazy hot, okay? So you're going to put them on finger tight, not too tight, because then they will buckle, and that doesn't help anybody with anything, okay? So just put it on there, screw it till it stops. Grab it and put it in the can. It's a beautiful thing. Remember, your rings do not have to be pretty. They're not an engagement ring. They're a tool. Okay? But here's the really cool news that I didn't know. I just learned it. That Four Jars actually has such great rings that they don't get ugly very fast. I'm like, what am I going to talk about if you guys keep addressing all of the issues that I come up with. <laughs> okay. So it does not have to be pretty to work. It just has to be able hot to screw onto the jar. Okay. That's it. Finger tight. Don't overthink it. Don't over screw it because then you will have a failure. Old fashioned jar has the lip you can grab onto where you don't lose fingerprints. It's pretty cool. Okay. There we go. I've got some old quart jars in here. Yes, I do. Okay, so we have six quarts in the canner. I'm now going to put the lid on, bring it up to pressure. A steady stream of steam. Check out any of my previous canning videos to see what that looks like. And if you can't see it, not a deal breaker. Hold up an old lid uh, where the vent is to see if it's coming out. You don't have to visibly see it. You can audibly hear a steady stream of steam, or you can see it with the aid of an old canning lid. Once it vents for 10 minutes, then we are going to set our timer. Or no, we're not. We're going to put the we're going to put the regulator on. And then once it starts jiggling because I'm using the weighted regular regulator, then we will start our timer. So for us, it's going to be 90 minutes for quarts. So 90 minutes for quarts, 65 minutes for pints. And that's with the weighted regulator. Be sure to check out the link down below because the weighted regulator, also known as the jiggle, jiggler, okay, those have different directions and times um, than the standard regulator that comes with it where you rely on the gauge. We're not relying on the gauge. Gauges are overrated. Yes, they are. Let's get this party started. Okay, my friends, we have let this completely cool down on its own. Yes, we have. And we are going to pull out these jars. I am so excited about this. Remember, don't go away yet. Oop, did you hear that? Because after this, I will show you how to cook these up. One of the ways to cook them up. Looking good. They did siphon a little bit. Kind of bums me out, but they'll be fine. Okay. Beautiful sweet potatoes. 
Let me bring you down closer for a look-see. Of course, the dog is outside barking at the yard puppies. Okay, so we did have some siphoning, um, but these will be fine. The issue when you have siphoning is if it gets to half or less. These are not half or less. Still, it's not a desired outcome. It's kind of a bummer. But you guys, it happens to everybody. It really, really does, okay? And part of it is the potatoes. They do absorb the liquid. Um, but looking in the canner, this was definitely some siphoning also. So we're going to let these cool for 24 hours. And then I'm going to come back. I'm going to crack open one of these beautiful jars. And I'm going to show you one of the ways that I use our canned sweet potatoes. Now, of course, you can drain them, mash them, add some butter, mm, add some bacon. Okay, my mouth just started watering. But you can also drain them and puree them so that you have soup. Or you can leave the liquid in there and puree it for soup. Because this is not starchy like, say, russet potatoes, okay? These are just beautiful sweet potatoes. I am so excited about this. Wait till you see how we cook these up. Mm-mm-mm. It's the next evening, and I've drained all the liquid from the jar, okay? And I'm going to show you one of my favorite ways to use my home canned sweet potatoes. Now, they're not as quick and easy. I mean, they're quick and easier than if you're going from raw, but um, they do take a hot minute to prep. So, we're going to put some butter into the skillet, and we're going to heat it up. Okay, and this is so good, but I want you to I, I want you to understand this is partly to show you one what I do with them, um, some of them, and two to show you exactly how soft they are when they are canned. Because keeping our expectations in check is very, very important, my friends. Okay. I might need to add a little more butter because everything's better with butter. Now what I do get is Swerve, the ultimate sugar replacement. Um, it's Swerve brown sugar. And so there are eight carbs per two tablespoons, okay? So two tablespoons is an eighth of a cup. So this is, I'm gonna be putting two serving sizes in with a quarter cup. I'm gonna put a quarter cup of Swerve. Oh, this is not the brown sugar. Please hold. Okay, now I've got the swerve of brown sugar. Yay. So you want your butter melted. We're gonna put in a quarter cup. You can use regular brown sugar, light, dark, whatever your taste buds prefer, okay? And you're gonna put that in with the butter. Butter. Okay. And then you're gonna mix it all up because it's going to create an amazing glaze for your sweet potatoes. When Phil and I first did these, we were both like, oh, the first bite. <laughs> we were just, we were so happy, okay? So you're gonna bring these out. Now these are super soft, and I'm gonna show you how, see how it fell apart like that? So they are super soft, okay? So you wanna kinda scoot them out. There we go. Apparently I didn't get all the liquid out. So very gingerly, very easily, you're just going to let them come out and do their thing. There we go. Okay. And then we're going to cook them on a lowish heat because you don't want to scorch it. And lowish heat is the trick. Okay, turn it down, turn it down, other way, there we go. And then very easily, very gingerly, flip them onto their other side after a few minutes, okay? But remember, these are super soft. Like these are pull out of the jar smash, okay? These are super, super soft. So what this is gonna do is caramelize on the side that's down and I'm telling you they are crazy good okay I am spending I am I am turning these too quick but 
Now we're going to let these sit. I'm actually going to put a few more in. Oh, there we go. Oh, there we go. I can put them in my meal prep. Yes, I can. But honestly, Phil will probably eat most of this jar for dinner tonight. I have a venison steak in the oven that he is eating. So, these will mash up with, like, no effort at all. It's They're entirely very, very, very soft. Because if you have any experience with sweet potatoes, that is how they get when you cook them. They're super soft. So we're going to let these on a low heat. We're going to let these do their magic right here. And then we will be back when it's time to seriously flip them all. And I'll show you what that looks like. You don't want to worry them too much or you will get mashed sweet potatoes. Not that they won't be amazingly good, but... Okay, we're going to turn off the heat. When a good amount of the, the butter sugar mix is over, right? And then we're going to put them into a container. Oh, this is just so good. Phil is going to enjoy this with his venison steak. And because it's swerve, you're not killing yourself on the calories, right? And I am going to take this pan and put it in some cold water. But look at that. Oh, that caramelized butter and sugar. Okay, life's good. Very, very good. So this is how we prepare some of our home canned sweet potatoes. Crazy good. Super fast, simple to make mashed sweet potatoes. Um, you take these and you mash them up and add some butter and some bacon and just a tiny bit of brown sugar or swerve. You've got the best meal anybody ever, ever had. Fantastic stuff. So, I hope you can yourself some sweet potatoes. Remember to check out 4jars.shop on the 24th at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time for their Black Friday sale. You're not going to want to miss that one. Until next time, everybody, be safe.